get started with the day, friends, let me tell you about Nick. Nick is a superhero. His kids call him dad. Unfortunately, Nick nicked himself shaving. Don't let your superhero get nicked like Nick. Go to scruffyman.com today for amazing Father's Day discounts. Use the promo code Jimmy and Shazam. You'll get an additional 18% off. That's scruffyman.com and use the promo code Jimmy at checkout. Sponsors here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. So let's jump in to China and what's happening there. We all know about what happened with the World Health Organization seemingly on China's side and trying to spread disinformation and also hide the reality about how the coronavirus got started and where it got started. That is to say, Wuhan, China. Questions, of course, remain as to how that came about. Was it in a Wuhan virology lab? Perhaps. We've seen enough evidence on this program to think that there's a strong case to be made for that. Or was it just entirely a natural occurrence? Just happened naturally from bats that exchanged this virus and then it ended up somehow in a human body and then spread from there. Regardless, the Chinese spread disinformation and they didn't allow for warnings to get out there, and the World Health Organization aided and abetted them in exactly that. Well, we must remember, too, because we played this clip a couple months ago when it happened, the World Health Organization, one of their leaders was in an interview with a Hong Kong news outlet asked about Taiwan. Take a listen to this. Would the WHO consider Taiwan's membership? Hello? We, with the, with the I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I couldn't hear your question. Okay, yeah, let me, let, let me, let me repeat the question. No, so, that's okay. Let, let's move to another one then. Right, because, because I'm, I'm actually curious on talking about Taiwan as well, on Taiwan's case. We decided to give Dr. Alward another call to follow up. And I just want to see if you can comment a bit on how Taiwan has done so far in terms of containing the virus. Well, we've, we've already talked about China. And, um, you know, when you look across all the different areas of, uh, of China, they've actually all done quite a good job. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for inviting us to participate. And, uh, and good luck as you go forward with the battle in Hong Kong. Here's the significance of that exchange with a Hong Kong media outlet. It is not even as much about the Chinese propaganda aspect of the WHO sort of reaffirming the Chinese messaging, but it also, on coronavirus, but it also was doing exactly that when it comes to the question of Taiwan. Now, Taiwan is a region in ch that uh, China considers to be still a part of it. Now, Taiwan considers itself to be independent of China. The Chinese government says, no, you're still part of us. They're just operating autonomously somehow. Now, really, there's a case to be made that the United States should give recognition to Taiwan. I think Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado, for example, has said that the United States should recognize Taiwan fully as an independent state. But nevertheless, the Chinese viewed Taiwan as part of China, which is exactly what was being reinforced with that WHO official who says, we already talked about China, all of China. He included Taiwan in China and didn't want to specifically address Taiwan because of the propaganda that the Chinese government consistently puts out about Taiwan. Well, you have something else with Hong Kong. In 1997, I believe it was, Hong Kong became a part of China in a semi-autonomous way. It used to be a British colony. The Brits said, hey, China, you can have them back, but for 50 years, you have to allow them to be 
largely autonomous, to run their own affairs, to not have Chinese secret police in there, to have an independent judiciary, so on and so forth. Well, that all changed in the last few days. When Xi Jinping, the ruler of China, decided to alter the terms of the arrangement. Let's go to cut one. Here's a little snippet from Fox News about what China is doing in regards to Hong Kong. Yeah, hi, Trace. And China is using last year's pro-democracy protests as an excuse to bring in this new law. They claim that last year's protests were a national security threat and they need to be responded to. As a result, we have seen further protests over the past weekend with 120 people arrested, the tear gas fired all over the city. This new law from Beijing would ban treason, subversion and sedition against the Chinese government. Protesters worry that the law will open the door to mass arrests, letting Chinese spies and security forces operate freely in Hong Kong, effectively ending the one country, two systems principle. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien rallied behind them. All Americans should watch what's happening on the streets of Hong Kong and realize on this Memorial Day, as we honor those who fell to, to keep us free, uh, that the price of freedom is high. And uh, the folks in Hong Kong are, are going to the streets and they're, uh, they're protesting to uh, demand their very basic rights. The Trump administration taking the right position on that. One country, two systems is the idea that technically Hong Kong is part of China, but it's also able to control its own internal affairs. And now, shall we say, Darth Vader says, I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. And that's what we're seeing right now, an alteration of this deal with Hong Kong that for 50 years they were going to be independent in essence, like at least well enough in terms of their autonomy. Now China is changing that under the cover of the coronavirus. We'll talk more about this with Gordon Chang later on in the program. But what they also did regarding Taiwan is striking, too. That is, they have said for years and years, we want peaceful reunification. That's been the phrase from China about Taiwan. We want peaceful reunification, to bring Taiwan back under China. And in the past, what they have offered to China is something similar to Hong Kong. One country, two systems. You get semi-autonomous authority. For the most part, you get to control your internal affairs. Well, China the other day dropped peaceful, and they just want reunification now with Taiwan. You couple that with what they're doing with Hong Kong, and you can tell that their objectives with Taiwan have changed. Their treatment towards Taiwan has changed. They're not sincere about one country, two systems anymore there. Ch Taiwan can't trust China to follow through if they can even follow through with their promise, their pledge to Hong Kong. And now Hong Kong, it looks like we'll have secret police there. Hong Kong may have judiciary members appointed by the Communist Party of China. Fundamental changes, hence protests going on once again in Hong Kong. All happening under the cover of COVID-19 and coronavirus. Now, the United States is limited in options, particularly because right now we are still in the midst of a semi-trade war with China. That is to say, while we had a phase one China trade deal a few months ago, the average for U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods coming into America is still 19.3%. Still 19.3%, which is more than eight times what it was when the trade war began in 2018. That means that American financial leverage, if that's what they wanted to use, maybe tariffs to try to address this, to get them to stop their blatant human rights, rights abuses against, Taiwan, or against Hong Kong, are more limited. It's more difficult, more challenging for the United States to put economic pressure on China because if they put tariffs, increased tariffs, for example, that are already higher, then that will put more of a squeeze on the American economy, not just the Chinese economy. So the tools are limited here, plus the Chinese already have tariffs averaging about 20.3% still. So tools are limited in my view, but we'll talk with Gordon Chang more about that later.
Thanks for watching this clip from Jimmy at the Crossroads. You do not want to miss a minute of engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel and you'll be sure to catch our live broadcast. I appreciate your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no one No sense Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>